when Aboriginal people lived here for 40,000 years, it was quite pristine. Make a comparison to plastic. It's a small amount of years that all of this thing has happened. Forty thousand years was based on an education. We need to create a blueprint so others can follow. Right now, we are here in Cape York. It's one of the most remote and beautiful places that I've ever seen in the world. It's almost like magic. It kind of feels like you're coming home and you don't want to leave. It's a place that I would say it changes you and it has a, a very special place in my heart. On the flip side, this is one of the most impacted regions in the world by plastic pollution. This area here, we're in sacred Aboriginal lands, so it is very, very remote. The work we do for Parla and the main focus is to get to these remote locations, which is quite difficult, get onto the beaches and remove tons and tons of marine plastics. Today um, what we're going to do is go down and access the southern end of the beach. Uh, we'll do our safety briefs there, then we'll work our way to the middle section here. This is where the mother load is. So yeah, we've, we've only very lightly cleaned this area, so we want to get in there and, and make a big impact today. <laughs> Righto, you good to go, Maren? Okay, keep your revs up and you will have a left corner and just sort of Slowly have the wheels going with the corner. So the plastic that we see washing up in Cape York comes from pretty much anywhere but Cape York. The best way to think about the oceans is the same way you think about the atmosphere. If you breathe out right now, eight days later, that air can be anywhere on the planet with the jet stream. The ocean is the same, it's an open system. So when we're talking about where's the problem coming from, it's not coming from one source, it's not coming from an individual country. The problem is global. The ocean currents can move this plastic across the planet, both on the bottom of the ocean, all the way through the water column and on the surface. It can come on the beaches here, or most dangerously, it can be in the animals that live in the ocean. So we're here in Far North Queensland, Cape Bedford. You've got the map of Australia. We've got the equatorial current coming in here. We've got the East Australian current coming down here. And then the predominant weather patterns are coming in from the east, pushing all that plastic debris straight up onto Cape York across the remote beaches. There's stuff from here in Australia and stuff that we produce. There is stuff coming in from Papua New Guinea, like bleach bottles that they're using to catch fish. Hey, what do you got there, mate? Bleach. Okay. They press it in the water, stun the fish, and then they throw it away. They take the fish and leave this behind yeah. in the water. And that and stays, it comes up brushes here. up here. With all the other ones. Yes? Yeah. I see heaps of them it around here. It becomes a problem for you and me. Yes, yes. This tree is called Kulkulkul. We cut the tree down and it's much like the um, bleach that they put in water these days. But uh, this is natural and we use it for catching fish. So we hit the bark, make the sap comes out. The best thing about this, we take it out of the water when we finish with it and then the other fish will go on surviving. In Cape Bedford in previous years we have found one or even two tons of rubbish per kilometer of beach which is massive pollution and on an average event which means five days working on the beach we would usually remove between two and three tons of debris. 
So I think coming out to a place like Cape Bedford, which is very remote and very rural, really reminds us that the reality of over 10 million tons of trash hitting our oceans every year is a global problem, but it's affecting everyone on a local basis. All of this plastic that you see here has come through the Great Bear Reef. And the Great Bear Reef is one of the most valuable and important ecosystems on the planet. And there is tonnage and tonnage of plastic traveling right through it. It gets eaten on, it gets stuck in corals, it leaches all its chemicals, and it gets smaller and smaller into microplastics where it gets into the entire food chain. Everything that the ocean has ever given them is classified as food. And now we added this material and there's still trust in the ocean so they, they eat it simply. That's something that we created it, that means we can also fix it. It's just not something that we can just accept. Every part of life in some way stems from the ocean. The air we breathe, life forms and the plants, everything on this earth is connected to the ocean in some form or another. To have a healthy ocean and environment Everything stems from that. Mother Nature has fed us and sustained us for millions of years and now the tables have turned and now it's us that have to sustain Mother Nature. We have to help out Mother Nature. If we can't look after our environment, then the earth will die. We just got to start. If there's a thousand miles, one foot first to a thousand miles. Look at that. We've got to stop.